Welcome to the Seven Laws of the Learner video series. We're currently in Law 1, the Law of the Learner. And now, here to tell you more about the Law of the Learner is our teacher, Dr. Bruce Wilkinson. I remember when I uh, first went to teach college in Oregon. And it was in my first week before I had a reputation on campus. And you could do anything you wanted before you had a reputation and get away with it. So I began to lecture to these freshman college students, a typical lecture, you know, with the Roman numeral number one, capital A, small one, small a, typical boring stuff. And I was going through and they were all taking notes and about 20 minutes into the first uh, lecture, I said, okay, uh, guys, uh, put away your pads. It's time for a test. And you saw this immediate panic <laughs> sweep across the audience and uh, everybody was looking test and some test on what? test on what I just taught you. And all of a sudden, a brave girl in the back raises her hand and she says to me, um, you're not really going to give us a test, are you? And I said, yes, uh, ma'am, I am. You can't do that? I said, well, I didn't know that. And I said, why, why don't you want me to do that? Well, we didn't have chance to learn this yet. And then I said to her, well, then what have I been doing? Well, what do you mean? Well, if you haven't learned it, then what have I been doing? Let's take a test. So we took the test. And all but one person in the class failed the test. And I saw the glances going back and forth in this freshman class as everybody was saying to everybody else, I'm transferring out of this guy's class. <laughs> this guy is crazy. And I said to the class, well, how'd you do? And only one person got a passing grade. And I said, now, if you, were, if you were to grade me on how well I taught you that material, what grade would you give me? And I saw that girl in the back wanting to raise her hand and say it. <laughs> Well, I said, I don't know about you, but I'd give me the same grade you got on your paper. And then I said, now, you're paying me a lot of money, a lot of money. I don't get much of it, but you're paying the school a lot of money <laughs> for this course. And I'm, quote, the teacher. I'm the one who's supposed to teach you something, yet we just spent 25 minutes, and at the end of it, nobody do anything. Then what did we do? Answer, you didn't learn it, and I didn't teach it to you. So I said, now, if you'll let me, if you'll let me, let me teach you for the first time. I said, there'll be no, no, no Roman numeral number one, capital A's. But if you come to this class, I'll take the responsibility of teaching you. So by the time you walk out of this room, you're going to have it, and you'll not forget it, and I'll put it there. So I went for another 20 minutes, the remaining 20 minutes of teaching for the first time in the class, not talking not giving notes, teaching. And then at the end of that 20 minutes, I laughed and I said, okay, now let's take another test on the teacher to see how I did teaching you. And all but one person in the class got an A. Somehow we've defined teaching as what somebody else did to us, giving notes. How do you do it? How do you cause someone else, how do I cause Lynn Bryant to learn? Can I make her learn? Uh-uh. Can I make it awfully hard for her not to learn? Uh-huh. Can I make her chase what I'm learning? So she's in her, in her heart, she's, oh, I gotta know that. Uh-huh. How do you do that? That's what this whole series is all about, but I'm gonna expose you to the second half of the law of the learner right now. And that is, how do you how do you do this? How do you start to think about this? Well, I remember one time when our car wasn't working very well and I tried to fix it and it would go fine and then it wouldn't sputter for a while and finally I pulled into my nearby uh, garage and I said to the guy, I can't figure it out. He says, well, do you mind if I put it on the diagnostic machine? I said, what's a diagnostic machine? He said, have you ever seen one of these? I said, no, it's a computer. I said, can I watch this? He said, sure. So we drive it in, we open the hood, he takes some wires on, plugs it in, turns it on and gets a readout. And he says, well, the reason why you can never figure this out is because there's some broken wires in the middle and you can't see it. I was so impressed. He said, just like that, you, you plug it in, you put some wires and you know what's the matter? He said, yeah. I remember driving out of that garage saying to myself, oh, wouldn't it be great if there was a teaching diagnostic machine? I mean, when a class wasn't working well, you turn the thing on and you said to the student, will you, sir, will you please come on up here and put your thumb right here? And you put your thumb, turn it on. To find out what on earth's going wrong. Why isn't it clicking? What's the matter with it? Well, you know, when you think about a car, 
There's only some systems that are going on in a car, right? If the car won't stop, it's the braking system. If the lights won't go on, it's the electrical system. There's only a few systems. And the challenge is to figure out which system isn't working and then fix that system. Now, how many systems are there in teaching? Are there 50 systems? You're saying to yourself, something's the matter here, it won't work right, I have no idea what the problem is? Or is there a few systems, and as a, the second you begin to identify those systems, you say, oh, it's not this, it's not this, it's this, and now I know how to fix it. Well, believe it or not, there are only three systems in teaching, and I want you to see them in our section called the APL Method. The L APL Method. On the bottom, I want you to write the word speaker or teacher. In the left, I want you to write down the word subject. On the top one, I want you to write the word student. And in the right hand box, the word style. Those three arrows, those yellow arrows, represent the three systems that exist in teaching. That is, you must have a teacher to have a class. You must have a student for it to be a class. That's one of them, the speaker and the student relationship. The second you open your mouth, you have to talk about a subject. And how you talk about the subject is called the style. Whether or not it's a lecture or small group, whether or not you're monotone or you're animated, you hold on to the desk, what you do. The speaker to the subject is the what you're talking about, the what you're talking about. The speaker to the student is the who you're talking to, and the style is the how you're talking about it. If you're a person who is a real subject-oriented person, then people who sit in your classes probably call you something. They, they, what kind of teacher is that person? Oh, she is a real scholar. Scholar. Some of you in this room are scholars. That is, when it comes time to teach, you usually have 55 reasons for something. You've read everything you can. You love books. Then there's some, some of the rest of us in here who are more student-oriented. That is, you're, you're real personable, and you know everybody on their first-name basis, and uh, you love sharing. You're kind of more casual-oriented. I think the word we would give is the word friend. Friend. And then the last category are, are who are real style oriented. That is, they have a lot of gestures and different methods and overheads perhaps, flip charts, blackboards. That would be a person they'd say, man, what a communicator that person is. What a communicator that person is. Now, how many of you would be more scholarly or more of a friend or more a communicator? See, all of us, the second we teach, we're doing all three of them. That is, you're talking about a subject, you have a relationship with a student, and you have a style. But all of us are strongest in one of these three. What I want you to do in those three boxes now is to put a number one in the box that you're most like. You're most number one. If you're really a scholar, then put a number one there. Then look at the last two and say, which one am I least like? Well, I'm not really much of a communicator. My style is kind of the same all the time. Put a three there, if you're like that, and then obviously you're a two in the last box. Let's see how this, how this group fits. How many of you would say, I think I'm most like this, the scholar type? I love the, it's okay to raise your hand. I love the way you go. How many, how many say a scholar type? Yeah, how many of you would say I'm more of a friend type? Whoa, and how many would say I'm more of a communicator type? Well, that's interesting. Which one's the best? Yeah, the one you are, right. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. If you're, if you're a, a real scholar type, you know, there's kind of a scale here of 1 to 10. If you're really a 10 and scholar, you, you, you're, you're full of knowledge here. And you love people to ask you questions if you're very scholarly. Because why? You're sure you know the answer. But if you're not very scholarly-like and somebody raises her hand, you say, well, see me at break. See me at break. 
If you're a real scholar type, you don't depend upon people's, other people's comments or quotes. But, but, but if you aren't very scholarly, you're always reading. Dr. Swindoll said right here, and you're always sticking to your notes. If you're real or friend-oriented, you're very personal, whereas the lower end would be more prof professorial. You're real uh, personal and practical. You're more theoretical at the other end. You're caring at the top end. You're cold at the bottom end. The people at the top here are more like they're transparent. You know about their family, their kids, what they had for breakfast. I mean, they're real personal. Down here, it's Dr. Wilkinson to you, young man. The communicator type right here, they, they teach you. They're all over the place. This is where they tell you. This person at the top is real fluid. You never know what they're going to do. They're very free. Person down here, they're not going to move. This is home. This is the womb right here. <laughs> and a person who's not very into this, you know, a major gesture to, the, to them is... <laughs> and I really mean it. And really getting close to your audience, you know, is, is coming around. I mean, this is home right here. You know, when you think about this, you try to think of caricatures. This, this is a character of a scholar type. I mean, they just go on and on, 100 reasons for everything. I had a professor in graduate school who was a caricature of this. And I remember he would start talking, and when he got into this stuff, he began to talk about over everybody's head. I remember he flew back from ministry from Houston to Dallas. He was telling us in class, and he said, I kept looking for my wife to pick me up, and she wasn't there. Finally, after waiting for an hour in the airport, he calls his wife up and says, Sweetheart, where on earth are you? Been here an hour. She said, what do, you, what do you mean? Where are you? What do you mean I'm at the airport here in Dallas? Why are you there? What do you mean? Well, you drove to Houston. <laughs> he said he had to buy a ticket, fly back to Houston, and drive home. <laughs> oh, man. Scholars. And then there's the other kind, who are the friend kind. They're not into material. They're just kind of into relationships and being close together. They bring their cup of coffee and they have their tennis racket there and they're... You never learn too much with them, but you have a great time. <laughs> and the last part is the communicator. That is the person who's using everything. Now let me ask you a question. All right. These are the only three things that can break when you're teaching. That's it. If you have a problem teaching, it's because the way you're handling your subject isn't appropriate to your audience, or they hate your guts. <laughs> the relationship. And the last one is, is the whole concept of how you communicate back and forth. That is, whether or not you lecture, 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 and that's all it is.